It's our eighth day for our exclusive live series, New China. Our reporters in three mobile studios are traveling through China's old industrial base in the northeastern manufacturing powerhouse in the southeast and the emerging southwest region. The special series is to celebrate the 70th anniversary of the People's Republic of China. Today, we show you the prosperity of ski resorts in China's northeast. Together with the snow economy, we also report on the ambition of cities in southwest of China. Uh, to build a better environment for sports and games, and to the Hengdian Marathon on the southeast, those efforts are in, intended to boost the local economy and ignite China's enthusiasm for sports and healthier lifestyle. Now our three teams are all standing by. Let's first move to Xu Xincheng and Jonathan. They are visiting a ski resort in Jilin. Actually, I bet I've been to that resort earlier this year. So how do you feel now there? All right, Adrian Fong, day eight for New China, and we are on road uh, to. Uh, we are at this re ski resort in Jili. It's called the Beishan, a weather cross country ski resort. I'm on road, of course, with my co anchor, Jonathan Best. But where is Jonathan? Um. <laughs> <laughs> really are right there. <laughs> Look at you! I'm sorry oh. to make you wait, but no, I'm like to make an right. entrance. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, as my microphone flies off here. So. <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. That was quite a ride. I oh, love it yeah. here. This is quite a complex. This is an indoor cross-country ski run here in Jilin. Thought to be the first really in Asia. Yeah. Now, for the skiers to whiz past us here, it's a big loop, about 1,300 yeah. meters long here. Outside, it's nice and warm in the 20s. Oh my god, right here it's freezing. It's freezing in here. It's very, very cold. Close to freezing to allow people to ski all year round. It's a pretty good concept. Yeah, of course. And actually, athletes train here to prepare for the 2022 Winter Olympics and work off this park, finished a few a month ago. And this was built out of a bombshell. Yeah. I can't believe that. And it's already available to professionals, as we have mentioned, and the public will be allowed by 2022. So winter sports obviously is a big deal in China. It's becoming a big industry here as well. This province has 12 ski resorts that attract more than 60 million tourists a year, which is generating about $17 billion. These are big numbers, folks. Mm -hmm. So CG Team's reporter Hu Chao has more on how this complex is changing the game here in China. Skiing practice on a balmy sunny day. For many athletes in China, winter is no longer the only season for practicing. This is the Beishan Four Season Skiing Park, the first of its kind in Asia. It's early autumn in China. The outside temperature is around 20 degrees Celsius. As you can see, I put on very thick clothes before I came in because the temperature in here is only minus 6 to 7 degrees Celsius. It's literally winter and it's perfect for ski training. This tunnel-like site was actually built upon an air raid shelter. It's 8 meters wide, 4 meters high, and as long as 1.3 kilometers. The hardware facilities and snow quality there all meet international professional standards. This resort has constant temperature and high quality snow. It's very suitable for practicing. Now we can practice in the four seasons here. Our practicing time is four times more than those in other cities. Xian also feels happy that more parents are encouraging their kids to learn winter sports. Our country has been actively promoting winter sports. Now more parents recognize and like winter sports and send their kids to our school for training. Class size has greatly expanded, which is great. This four-season ski resort also aims to offer a hand in selecting more excellent athletes and preparing them for the 2022 Winter Olympics in Beijing. And the city of Jilin is a natural place for winter sports with lots of unique advantages. Jilin is located at a latitude giving it powdery snow in the winter. The snow season here is as long as five months. 
In winter, the temperature is not very cold, around minus 10 degrees Celsius. The wind speed is also low, and the snowy mountains covered by thick forests also add to the skiing experience. The local government has strengthened infrastructure. Fourteen middle and high-end ski resorts were built. Last year, more than a million tourists visited the city's ski resorts, up 40 percent over the previous year. We've already seen returns on the big investment that both companies and government have made. For example, businesses of hotels and restaurants around the ski resorts are booming in snow season. In the long term, the development of the ice and snow industry will benefit different levels of society. Huchao, CGTN, Jilin City in Jilin Province. So a huge investment in China, really building this whole new yeah. industry out of scratch for the most part. And of course, the big focus, the next Winter Olympics, which of course mm -hmm. Beijing is hosting. And, and now we're joined by Liu Yijing, the Deputy Director General of Jilin Sport Bureau. And so, why is this resort so important, especially for the professionals? So, Liu Ju, ah, 就是因为我们讲的这个，其实我们的这个滑雪场很重要了。为什么呢？ We talk about the Jilin Beishan All-Weather Ski Park. Actually, it's one of the key projects to prepare for the 2022 Winter Olympic Games. And this will be held in China. And why we have this is basically we provide more available training venues for China's cross-country skiing and improve athletes' performance. So basically, the old seasons are available for our athletes are trained, so they do not need to really have a visit to Europe for more art trainings. So there's also a good venue to help us to have more potentials. So talk about after Olympics, it will also open to the public. And besides this resort, we also have the a runs available for the public. So basically, we would like to first let our public really interested in the snow Winter sports. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah, I mean it's interesting because we're inside a mountain, yeah. old Baham shelter here, but are, what yeah. you're not seeing is all of the resorts outside uh, that are going to be filled yeah. with many, many tourists and skiers uh, when winter approaches here in a couple of months. And with China gearing up to host the next Winter Olympics, the country is ramping up its focus, of course, on building world-class athletes. CGTN's Jin Kwan has more on that. Promoting mass fitness was first proposed by Chinese President Xi Jinping in the year 2012. He says physical fitness is vital for all people to live a healthy life and is important in growing China's competitiveness in sports. As the world's second largest economy, China's sporting industry has a developing yet huge market potential. As the economy grew, more and more people started to think about living a healthy life. They used to give up fitness activities because they had to spend money on it. Nowadays, however, more and more people choose to pay for gym membership. This is a great change in the Chinese people's perspective. 29 Olympiads in 2008 are awarded to the city of Beijing. China has made relentless efforts to promote and develop the Olympic spirit. It took part in its first Winter Olympics in 1980 and won its first Olympic gold medals at the 1984 Summer Olympics in the United States. Beijing hosted the Summer Games in 2008, and in 2022 it will become the first city ever to host both Summer and Winter Olympics. The success of the 2008 Beijing Olympics put China on the world stage, boosting its international status. Taking part in the Olympics not only benefits the development of China's sports industry, but also enhances its role in the international community. Over the past 70 years, China has made great efforts to become part of the Olympic Games. While hosting the Olympics is a practice of soft power and public diplomacy, it requires a lot of economic strength and national legitimacy. The Chinese government is aiming to heighten public awareness on sports by 2020 with the goal to build a healthier nation. And mass participation in sports is an important part of this strategy. The government is also designing a program to enhance the country's sports industry and turn it into a key economic component by 2035. Jen Kwan, 
CGTN, Beijing. So we're going to see supporters can make the country healthier <laughs> and, of, of course, right now bringing a lot of investments, yeah. right? So now join us is uh, Benjamin Chow from Paris School of Business and Tong Ji Wen, our current affairs commentator. So first, let's talk about how big is the winter sports industry here in China and how big it will be. Well, as you know, the Winter Olympic is coming in 2022. Uh, in three years, the government is really big on you know, encouraging a lot of people coming on. I heard one number. The government wants to encourage 300 million going to try some sort of uh, winter sports. And that's the size of the American population. And in terms of number, dollar amount, the, if you look at, at our carnival parts, the American sports market is about uh, 70 billion US dollars. We have winter sport is less than a, a quarter. Mm -hmm. If we these three hundred million people spend about uh, 20, 30 US dollars, that would mean exceeding the size of the American population. The the, the, the amount uh, spent. Uh, which usually comes in four different ways. Wow. Uh, media rights, sponsorship, merchandise and you know gains receipts. Mm. But Professor Tong, I mean, as we're hearing, these are big numbers. These are big investments. What do you think can be done to guarantee that people will come, that these uh, these resorts will attract enough tourists to keep them sustainable? Well, ROI, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is return on their investment. So to protect their um, sort of um, investment is the priority of any government, any sports administration uh, in setting up such a great facility for that sports meet. And so... Uh, legislation, I believe legislation will basically help to protect the interest and rights. Uh, once the contract is signed, the contract is out there. Respect the rights, respect the contract, respect the terms. But then eventually everything boils down to this very uh, uh, facilities uh, being in use. I mean, right. don't, don't invest and leave that uh, in waste. Well, do you worry about that, that saturation, too many ski resorts being built for not enough tourists? Is that a concern here? Well, yeah. yes, absolutely. And so this is why, actually, when we come into this very compound, we see these ski kind of routes being built. And that's the first step that, that leads to this very elite sport being popularized and being uh, actually used by the general public in the future. Yes, so there are about 700 ski resorts in China right now, only 25 meet the uh, Western standards, so there's a lot 700, I heard that correctly. Yeah, 700. 700. It's incredible. Well, it's a big industry. There's a lot of people here and a lot of people learning how to ski. Yeah, We're going to get you out there on the, oh. <laughs> on the uh, skis hopefully soon, maybe. <laughs> but um, let's go someplace warmer now because I want to get over to Sean, Caleb's, and Tao Yuan here standing by in the southwestern part of the country with more on sports. Guys, what are you up to? Hi, uh, Jonathan and uh, Sun Chen. We are very jealous hearing about all that skiing going up there. We've been kind of in some hot, muggy weather for the past several days, but really, uh, sports, a big topic of conversation down here in Chengdu, not the least of which because China has indicated it wants to be a major sports powerhouse in the coming years. Chengdu, during its part as well, this city, the most happy city uh, in China, and it's also got some very important athletic events coming up in the next two to five years. To begin with, the 31st World University Summer Games will be in 2021, and in the following next year, uh, another big contest, uh, especially here in China, is going to be the Table Tennis Team Championships. Uh, that will happen in 2022. And finally, in 2025, it will be the 56th World Game. So a lot of activity coming uh, here. And incidentally, uh, Tao Yuan, I've also read that if you gauge all the cities around the world, Chengdu, which we're looking at now as we drive, ranks number 28 mm. in the world in sports activity, sports participation people who enjoy sports so it really is picking up yeah but we're actually not quite happy with the number 28 right now we <laughs> want to up the game so um, I think in terms of uh, hosting more international as well as domestic events uh, Chengdu really wants to take on more responsibility in that regard because um, one thing about the city is that it is already a pretty well-established tourist destination mm. so those two sectors kind of can play into each other so um, this year's world police and firemen games for example I think a lot of the people came to the city not just for the games but also just to experience this city and now 
For more on this, let's bring in our two guests, um, uh, Professor Liu Baocheng with the uh, University of International Business and Economics, and also Alberto Lebron. He's a researcher of international political economics at Peking University. Thank you for joining us, uh, guys. Professor Liu, let me start with you. So I mentioned that um, the tourism sector as well as the sports sector, they're kind of playing into each other. How do you think um, Chengdu's tourism is supporting its sports industry? Well, uh, theoretically, the role of sports can serve a number of strategic ob uh, objectives. One is that it raises people's spirit, mm -hmm. and it helps people to have organized way of building constitution, and also it really pacify uh, some of the extreme fights because you find a way to compete in an orderly way. And then the by the most recent. Uh, index to, uh, that is published in America, uh, which is the global uh, sports impact, which measures the, uh, a particular sport, how it's really exert on economic growth, on the uh, fundraising activities, on sustainability of a particular city. And China is now, uh, uh, has really exceeded the United States to be number one right. in the world. And ever since the Olympic, it seems that uh, uh, it's a re really an incarnation of China to participate in all world events since we joined WTO. And now, you know, uh, Chengdu is now uh, taking care of uh, 67 uh, world-class uh, sports events wow. in, three, in three years. So the aim at, uh, the, uh, economically, the aim at uh, $150 billion RMB's income, and that can really feed into mm -hmm. the uh, tourism, uh, the cultural activities. You know, aside from those, uh, you know, activities that the Sean has cited, uh, I really look forward to the uh, World Game because World Game is really very different to the Olympic Game because. Uh, uh, whatever Olympic uh, game is doing, they will not do it. <laughs> and they will do more leader uh, type of games, Absolutely. like uh, billiards, right. like uh, boomerang, and uh, uh, jigsaw, or casting, fishing, uh, dancing, uh, bodybuilding, all this. So uh, that really is perfectly fitted to the cultural uh, the property of uh, Chengdu. The spirit and, uh, of the city. Yeah, the spirit of the city. So I think, you know, this is going to be uh, a very good, uh, you know, theme to shape this uh, uh, city, both in terms of infrastructure improvement, oh. in terms of uh, uh, tourism, uh, economic growth, and more importantly, the spirit and branding of the city. Mm. Alberto, uh, you're from Madrid, Spain, and it's a nation and a city that knows a lot about success in sports. Your football uh, passion in that region is legendary, and also the 92 Olympics with the opening up the Archer Lighting the Torch. If you haven't seen that, go back and look at it online. Amazing video. What will happen to Chengdu and indeed this area of China as more international sports become popular here? How will this city change and grow? Hmm. Well. Success in sports is the very first signs of economic uh, development. Once all the needs are met, uh, people can dedicate to raise their uh, spirits practicing sports. So at the very first moment, uh, provinces uh, like uh, Sichuan, big cities like uh, Chengdu, uh, organizing major sports events, uh, promoting uh, students and youngsters practicing sports, then they are successful in major sports events uh, like uh, World Cups or Olympic Games. It attracts uh, money, it attracts uh, tourism, and it encourages more and more people to practice those sports. Therefore, uh, Chengdu and Sichuan can become a sports uh, powerhouse. And the most important thing is that that would be the very first signs that uh, economic development has been achieved uh, in an area like uh, Chengdu. Right. What? 
So I think traditionally China didn't used to have that um, much football fields, basketball fields in the future, and I think that's also one area to look to uh, to get people's passion. And especially Winter Olympics, mm. because that is something China has not been strong in, but hosting the games in, in the near future, as I'm sure Sin Chen and Jonathan will tell us as we throw back to the Northeast, there is a priority on that area, getting people to teach skiing, uh, embracing the passion of it, and I'm sure these guys will uh, tell us a little bit more about it. Guys? Thank you, Sean and Natalia. And for sure, I think winter sports is picking up here in China. And look where we are. Yeah. And without question, the country is spending billions of dollars oh, investing of course, on the facilities, yeah. on yeah. training, on Absolutely. really becoming competitive in mm -hmm. all sports. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. As we have the package that we saw earlier, like make people from this country healthier and stronger. And we have more from our Southeast colleagues, still warmer than we, <laughs> we are. And Lindy Mtagana and Yang Shengxi, take it away. Well, thank you so much, Jonathan and Xinxian. Well, today we're here in Hangtian, which is in Zhejiang province. It is known for being China's Hollywood, but don't let that fool you. People here do enjoy a variety of sporting activities too. In fact, one of the most popular events on the sporting calendar is the Hangtian Marathon. It is now, it's now a well-known event for both locals and visitors from around the world. And of course, thousands of people have participated in the event since it was founded in 2015. Now, uh, 2019 marks the fifth Hangtian Marathon with over 60 enthusiasts participating in a trial run. Now, the competition route sees athletes run through major scenic spots of Hangtian World Studios and experience the cultural and historical atmosphere during the process. Now, there's also a carnival called Night of the Hangtian Marathon this year. A cartoon character, Nameless Hero, participated in the marathon as the mascot. Well, experts say the event has the potential to become a pillar of sports tourism in the area. They also say the cooperation between government and companies will make Hangtian an attractive place for marathon fans. Yes, uh, regional integration is not a new concept, but Zhejiang and its neighboring provinces are introducing the concept to the sports industry. The Yangtze River Delta Sports Industry Integration Plan includes Zhejiang, Jiangsu Province, Anhui Province, and Shanghai. The idea is that the sports market and sports-related enterprises will experience stronger growth when resources are integrated within a larger economic region. Now, for more discussion on that, let's bring in our guest. Uh, we have Mr. Andy Mock, who is the senior fellow uh, at the Center for China and Globalization, and Professor, of course, Professor Lin Bao Chang, Dean of the China Institute for Studies in Energy Policy at Xiamen University. Thank you very much for joining our program. Now, for my first question goes to you, Professor Lin. Uh, how does the sports industry integration plan for this region, uh, how is it supposed to work? How do different provinces and the city of Shanghai uh, bring their advantage to the, to the table? The integration plan or strategy started in 2012. Uh, it was uh, quite a few years ago. It started with uh, Jiangsu, Zhejiang, Shanghai, and one university, Shanghai Sport University. Jiang Anhui joined the integration later on in 2014. The four provinces has about roughly 45,000 sport-related enterprises, accounting for 30% of the total, national total. So it's a big industry in this area. The integration was built on the similarity and differences, obviously. And two main similarity, one is the consensus. There's a work consensus among four provinces that that the sport is a, is a growing point and it's a, it's a good industry to develop in this area. Another consensus, another similarity, of course, is the same area, the same location, and they are neighboring each other. The differences, there's quite a few differences. For example, Shanghai has a lot of land brand and major events in Shanghai. So, so it is a port for sport in China. Zhejiang province uh, uh, has a lot of private enterprise manufacturing high-end sport equipment. Jiangsu has a huge population and has a very good tradition in sport. And in fact, it's quite strong 
intensive the competition in China, and because its population is a is a is a big force for China sport. So so those are the an army province. Yes, has a very good sport to, tourism resources. So put them all together, uh, I believe they can complement each other and become a good uh, integration. I believe that you will be success because uh, with work planning, work consensus, work tradition, and most important, work income. The income of the particularly Zhejiang, Jiangsu, and Shanghai are well above the national average, much higher than national average. Uh, well, in China, sport, money cannot buy sport for some. Okay, I don't want to give examples, but you can buy most of sports, I believe. Right. right. Well, well, Andy, let's bring you back in here. And first, let me say welcome back. Of course, you were with us in the first five days and rejoining yeah. us now again on day eight. Good to have you with us once again. Good to be back. Is this all about the money and the industry, or do you think an integration plan will have benefits for developing talent? So I think it absolutely an integration plan absolutely is a very solid approach to building the sports ecosystem. So while it's not all about the money, it is I think it's necessary but not sufficient. So Professor Lin alluded to the higher per capita income here. But when we look at this regional grouping, it's 220 million people. It's three trillion dollars in GDP. So if it were a separate country it would actually be about number seven. So about the size, a little bit bigger than France. With a per capita GDP of $20,000, which is double the, uh, the China national uh, GDP of 10,000. So I said that's necessary, but not sufficient. One other thing that makes the Yangtze River Delta very unique is that it's very international and very cosmopolitan. So what that means is that Consumers here are very willing to adopt new activities, whether that's a marathon, whether that's CrossFit, whether that's other kinds of more boutique, uh, you know, cycling, these all kinds of sports we see in other parts of the world or physical uh, fitness activities. So I think that it really is a very, very promising opportunity. And what China is good at is planning. So I think by bringing a structured approach to tapping the resources, including the transportation infrastructure. Because when we think about 220 million people, the ability to get from point A to point B quickly, on time, and inexpensively, I think is a vital ingredient to build this sports ecosystem. Thank you, Thank you very much for your analysis. Now, uh, well, we all know that Zhejiang province borders the ocean and has plenty of water resources. So one of its signature strong suits in sports is swimming, actually. No wonder that this is the birthplace of Olympic gold medalists like Sun Yang and Ye Shuwen. Well, it's still pretty hot down in the south. We might as well go for a swim between yeah, shows. Exactly. What do you think? Actually, that's a well, good idea. <laughs> yeah, back to you in the northeast. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, my gosh. They're going to go swimming and we're skiing. Isn't, oh, yeah. That says a lot about China, doesn't it? Of right course, there. Yeah, it's a big country, isn't it? <laughs> it's a big yeah. country with a lot to see. Well, now I'll wrap it up for this hour here uh, for this edition of New China. Tomorrow at this time, we're going to be in the city of Shenyang. And we'll see how an old industrial, industrial city has transformed itself. And back to you, Beijing. Thank you, Jonathan, Xinchen. I mean, I actually envy you guys because I'm a huge ski fan myself, been skiing for more than 10 years. You guys keep warming there. And also many thanks yes. to my colleagues on the route, so Yang Chunxi wow. and Lindy in Hengdian, as well as Sean Kelly and Taoya in Chengdu. Tomorrow, they will take a closer look at innovation in China's manufacturing sector. Stay tuned to Global Business. You're watching Global Business coming up next. Crude oil prices surged to